highest praise we can say. Come on, put those hands together again this morning. Amen. We would like to welcome you to the most exciting church in Johnson County, Cleveland. at 8 p.m. Sunday morning discipleship at 945 and our exciting worship service at 11 a.m. And also next Sunday is the Sunday before Christmas and we will have an amazing Christmas message by our beloved pastor. And let me tell you this, if you've never heard our pastor preach a Christmas message, he does it like no other. So you don't want to miss next Sunday. Tell everyone you know, if they want to kick Christmas off in a way to really honor our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they owe it to themselves to be here with us on next Sunday. Amen. This concludes our morning announcements, and we ask that you govern yourselves accordingly. All right, now we're going to go ahead and take up the offering. If you all could please uh, turn with me and face the little red box. And I want to make it known that here at Cleburne, Full Gospel Holy Temple, we receive the offering, not take it up, because we understand that your giving is between you and God. And we want to encourage you to honor God in your giving. If you will please bow your head with me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you please bless this offering, God, that we're going to receive. We ask that you bless those who have and those that don't have, God, but they have a desire. We ask that you please come in and bless it abundantly. And we ask that you thank you in advance because we know that everything that's given goes for the upkeep of your ministry. And we ask that you come in and bless everyone in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, the glory, and the honor. Amen. Praise the Lord. We ask that everyone stand on your feet. And now it's time for the better part of the service. We ask that you lift your hands this way. And we say this so often, but I ask that you say it and mean it. Say, Lord, send your word and bless my soul. Say, Lord, don't let me leave the same way that I came. And Lord, don't let my neighbor leave the same way that they came in Jesus name all right now we're going to turn it over to the very capable hands of our wonderful pastor pastor Jonathan Halton come on give him a big hand come on and put those hands together oh you can do better than that come on and put those hands together and bless the Lord is he worthy is he worthy is he worthy is he worthy Tell somebody he's a worthy God. Tell somebody he's a worthy God. That's why I lift my hands. Because he's worthy of all the praise. Mm. As I say so many times, you may not come from a church background. So when you see the saints of God lifting their hands in the sanctuary, you say, Pastor Halton, what's that all about? But when we lift our hands, what we're telling God is, God, I surrender. Take a few moments and just lift those hands and just close your eyes and just surrender 
to what the Lord wants you to do. Lord, have your way in my life. Have your way in my mind. Have your way in my soul, Lord. Move me out of the way and have your way. Lord, just don't let me leave the same way I came. Lord, don't let me leave the same way I came. By the time I leave, let me leave stronger. Let me leave wiser. Let me leave better than when I came in. Just don't let me leave the same way that I came. If you believe God is going to do something for you, come on and put those hands together. Open up your mouth and bless the Lord. We bless him, we bless him, we bless him, we bless him. Serve my praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You deserve my praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy of all the praise. And he's worthy of the worship. Mm. My soul. Come on and just enjoy him right now. Just enjoy him right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to formally welcome you to, in my opinion, the most exciting church in Johnson County, Cleburne Full Gospel Holy Temple. If you're excited, put those hands together and make some noise. You ought to just wear it back and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Amen, amen. Certainly, the Lord is doing some great things even in our midst. And I believe that the best is yet to come. You ought to tell somebody the best is yet to come. Amen. God is doing some phenomenal things. Amen. I thank God for each and every one of you being here. Put your hands together for yourselves being here this morning. Amen. Amen. Glad that you're here this morning. I want you to meet me back. Amen. This next Sunday, we're going to preach the Christmas message. Amen. I'm not preaching this morning, but I promise you, I'm going to try my best to preach the paint off the walls next week. Amen. If that's okay. Amen. But we have a very well capable speaker here this morning. Amen. Certainly, certainly so proud of this woman of God. I remember when we were at our old church, you know, she was just sitting there just not saying nothing to nobody. And I asked her to start giving announcements. Reluctantly, she began doing so. She went from doing announcements to doing Sunday school. Went from doing Sunday school to heading up the teaching ministry. I remember when she was ordained, she took her ordination test, scored a perfect score. Amen. Amen. So she knows what she's talking about. She's been a tremendous help and a blessing to the ministry. Amen. Lift those hands toward heaven and just repeat after me. Say, Lord, send your word. Say, Lord, bless my soul. Say, Lord, bless my neighbor. So put your hand on your heart. Say, Lord, don't let me leave the same way I came. Say, Lord, don't let me leave the same way I came. So then faith cometh by hearing. Hearing comes by hearing the word of God. Paul said, how can they hear without a preacher? And we have a woman of God that's ready to deliver the word of God right now. Amen. Let's put those hands together as I introduce the psalm. Amen. And present the others, the woman of God, evangelist, Portia Boone. Let's receive her by the words 
of amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. You can do better than that. I said praise the Lord, everybody. God is a good God. God is a faithful God. God is kind. He's merciful. He's a good God. Do you all agree on this morning? We serve an awesome, awesome Savior. And I'm just glad to be saved on this morning. I'm glad to be on the Lord's side. Amen. You all may be seated on this morning. I do give honor to God who is most definitely the head of my life. And I thank God that I am saved. I thank God that I am filled with the Holy Ghost. And I appreciate God that I have no other mind but to serve and to please God in these last and evil days. Amen. I thank God for our leaders here, Pastor and Evangelist Halton. Let's give them a hand clap on this morning. Amen. I thank God for my family. I thank God for all of you, my church family. And I thank God for those of you that are tuned in on this morning. I am truly excited to be in God's house on today. And it's just, again, it's just a blessing to be here. Amen. Did you all enjoy the series, Spiritual Warfare? Amen. Amen. Our pastor preached an awesome message. Amen. Amen. Well, let me just hurry right along and get into our message on this morning. How many of you enjoy playing games? And when I say games, it could be video games. It could be board games. Um, some of you like sports or whatever the game is, you enjoy playing games. Well, how many of you are familiar with any of these games? Here's one, Pac-Man. Do we have any Pac-Man lovers on this morning? Amen, I went way back. Amen, what about this one here? The Super Mario Brothers. Now that one was one of my favorite, y'all. I, I really enjoyed the Super Mario Brothers. And then how many Uno lovers do we have in the house on this morning? Now it is, a, it's a crime and a shame, but I'm gonna go ahead and confess it. I don't think I still know how to play Uno right, y'all. So I need those of you that are experts here to teach me how to play Uno. Amen. Now, you all, this game right here, on game day, our pastor was trying to get some people's attention. And let me tell you something. They were caught up in this game right here. Let me tell y'all something. He was trying to pray over the food. The man of God couldn't even get the prayer because the people at the back table slamming those dominoes. How many domino lovers do we have on this morning? Amen. And now my two favorite games are Connect Four and Checkers. Do I have anybody that like Connect Four and Checkers on this morning? I got beat on game day too, y'all, and Checkers. But that's okay, though. I'm going to go home and sharpen up my skills. Amen. And how many of you know that person that just doesn't like to lose? I mean, it doesn't matter what game you play them in. They can't stand losing. And they'll have you playing that game with them over and over and over again. And instead of taking their first three losses, the first three times, they'll start accusing you of cheating. But the problem is they just can't play. They just can't win. And you could have an audience sitting right there watching you all play the entire time. But they'll accuse you of cheating and eventually they'll start cheating themselves because they just can't stand to win. Do you all know somebody like that? Well, I've had someone play a game with me. I believe it was Connect Four. And because I was beating them in Connect Four, they decided to break the game. So then I asked the question, what happened to healthy competition? I mean, it's okay to lose. You know, the last time I checked, it was just a game. But it's sad to say on this morning that for some of you, your life and your walk with the Lord has been nothing but a game. Many of you have allowed the enemy to play games with you for a long time now. And it's time for you to put a stop to it. So I'm going to ask you to help me announce my text on this morning. And I want you to turn to your neighbor or turn to the person that's closest to you. And I want you to tell them game over. Tell somebody else game over. You know, you got to let the enemy know you played me once. Shame on you. You played me twice. Shame on me. But the game 
the game is over. You remember that uh, trick cereal? I mean, the tricks commercial with the trick cereal and how that rabbit was always trying to get the, get the cereal from the kids. And for some of you, you have been eating the enemy's tricks for a very long time now. And it's about time for that to end. And let me ask you a question. What did those kids tell that rabbit? He, they said, hey, silly rabbit, tricks are for kids. And the last time I checked, I am far from a kid. And so are you. We cannot continue to sit back and allow ourselves to get caught up in the same mess over and over again. We have things to do, we got places to go, and we got some people to see. Do I have a witness on this morning? So it's time for us to stop allowing the enemy to play games with us. You better tell the enemy those games you've been playing with me, you better go and play them with somebody else, because I'm not the one. So starting today, and starting right now, tell your neighbor again, the game is over. So you may be wondering, Sister Boone, what games are you talking about? Well, let me go ahead and bring some awareness to you on this morning. Because the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 2 and 11, lest Satan should get an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of saints' devices. What does that really mean? It shouldn't be that we are outsmarted by the enemy because you know why? We should be familiar with his evil schemes. They used to tell me, you need to take those rose petal glasses off and see things for what they really are. You need to see things for how they really are. Tell somebody, game over. So then you may be wondering, well, what games are you talking about? Let's go to the Spurs game. Game of shame. There are some of you that have made some mistakes. And you, as well as people, refuse to allow yourself to move on from those mistakes. You won't allow yourself to move past them. People won't allow you to move past them because it's that mistake. The enemy continues to allow that thing to just weigh over you. Some of you, you have sincerely and you have genuinely felt like you've embarrassed. You're embarrassed about the life that you once lived. You found yourself in a situation within the past three years, but you know what, you've repented of it. And God has forgiven you and he's thrown that thing in the sea of forgiveness. But the problem is, like I told you before, you won't forgive yourself and people keep holding it up against you. You have attempted to conceal some things, but several people, they know your business. Don't allow those mistakes or those setbacks to stunt your progression in life don't allow, don't allow those mistakes and those, those things to stunt your growth and your walk with the Lord. Instead of allowing it to stunt your growth and your walk with the Lord, allow it to propel you in that next level in God. Some of you may be wondering, you're having a hard time trying to live a holy life. Let me make it simple for you. A holy life is a clean life. A holy life is a pure life. And you can live a clean and a holy life. And a successful life too. But we got to understand that we cannot live two and three days at a time. We got to take one day at a time. You can only live holy one day at a time. You can only live a clean life one day at a time. So take your time and live a clean life before the Lord. And I want to tell you on, the, on this morning, this is the best life that you will ever live. I'm so glad that God chose me. Let me tell you something. As Sister Lewis say often, I don't take nothing from my journey. I appreciate God for the life that he's allowed me to live. So don't let the enemy play with your mind. And don't let him play with your heart. It's a reason why you keep coming to the house of God. It's a reason why you keep listening to the word of God. It's a reason why you keep tuning in to Facebook Live and YouTube Live. Because you want to hear the word of God. The Lord is trying to draw you closer and closer to him. The Bible lets us know where it says in Jeremiah 31 and 3. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore with loving kindness 
have I drawn thee. You do not have to stay in the shape that you are in. You can live a victorious life. A lot of times we walk around as pastors say with this victim mentality. You don't have to have a victim's mentality. You can have victory in Christ Jesus. For some of you on this morning, you say, you on the Lord's side. You love God, but you're depressed. And you are ashamed to say that you are depressed. Some of you are going through sickness in your body. And you feel like you've sinned against God if you've done something wrong. You're saved, but you're hurting. People can't see the hurt that you're dealing with, but you're hurting on the inside. Some of you are saved, but you are discouraged. It doesn't matter what anybody says to you to try to encourage you or push you along, but you are discouraged. You're afraid to talk to people about your discouragement. Some of you on this morning, you're going through emotionally, you're going through mentally, psychologically, and you are experiencing some physical pain on this morning. The enemy has you bound. But I want you to know that it is not the will of God for you to live like that for the rest of your life. I said, I want you to know that that is not the will of God for you to live like that for the rest of your life. And you may ask yourself, well, Sister Boone, how do you know? Because guess what? I thought the very same thing. But I appreciate God for his word on this morning. I am so glad that God keeps his promises. And 3 John 2, it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. And I'm going to stop right there. When he talks about health, when I'm thinking about health, I'm thinking about my mental health. I'm thinking about my emotional health. I'm thinking about my physical health. He wishes above all things that I may prosper and be in health, that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospering. You can have health in every area and in every aspect of your life. Now, I was going through a trial. You know how sometimes we telling people our testimony? And we say, oh, I was going through. But God just dropped something in my mind. Don't just say you going through. But I found that I wasn't just going through, y'all. I was growing through. I was growing through those trials. I was growing through those situations. I was growing through those circumstances. I wasn't just going through, but I was growing through. So as I was growing through, you all, this one trial, I literally felt like that I was in a daze every single day. I'm talking about the game of shame. I felt like my mind was heavy, that I couldn't think clearly. I remember calling a coworker and I was telling her, you know, it's a blessing to be connected to people that's connected to God. And I thank God for people that you can be real with and they won't judge you. So I began to tell her, I said, I feel like I can't even think right. I feel like every day that I get up, that I'm going to work, I'm just going. Have you ever been there when you're going to work, you don't even know how you got there? Because your mind is so heavy. But it felt like I was going through a daze every single day. The enemy told me that I was damaged goods. And from that point on, I thought very low of myself. Some of you on this morning, you think very low of yourself as well. You may not have told anybody, but God sees you and he knows you. So I thought very low of myself. And I was thinking of every reason why what the enemy said could be true. Am I a failure? Where did I go wrong? Where did I mess up? People look at you sometimes and they assume that you are one of the most confident people that's walking the face of the earth. They don't know how hard you are fighting within to maintain your salvation. They don't realize how hard you are fighting on the inside to maintain your sanity. They don't know how hard you are fighting on the inside to maintain your integrity. They don't understand how hard you are fighting to maintain your character. I'm talking about the game of shame, you all. You feel like a failure. You feel like you reached your highest peak in ministry. You feel like you reached your highest peak in life and you feel like there is nothing else for you to do. You are ashamed of where you have been. You are ashamed of where you have come from. You are ashamed of where you are right now. 
Tell somebody the game of shame. You are ashamed of the things that you had to experience in life. As a matter of fact, some of you are ashamed of where you are right now. But let me tell you how you're going to make it out. You are going to hold on to God. You are going to fight the good fight of faith. You are going to lay hold to eternal life. You are going to stay faithful to God. You're going to stay faithful to the house of God. You're going to stay faithful to the word of God. And you're going to stay faithful to the work of God. Somebody say game of shame. The Bible says in St. Luke 10 and 18, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven, and behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. I said over all the power of the enemy, and thereby means there's nothing, there is nothing that can hurt you. Let me say it again. Behold, I give unto you power. You gotta talk to yourself sometime when you quote the word of God. Behold, he gave unto me power to tread over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing tell somebody say nothing, nothing and nothing shall by any means hurt you can I get a witness on this morning somebody shout game over that was the game of shame now we're gonna talk about the game of pain somebody say game of pain some of you have allowed people to define you. They have defined your personality. They've defined your character, your attitude, even your physical appearance. Try to tell you how you look. Try to tell you how you are. What if they told you, oh, you selfish? You mean-spirited? You are disconnected? You know what, you're not tall enough. You're not short enough. As a matter of fact, your hair is not straight enough. It's too curly. Oh, your hair is too curly and it's not straight enough. I'm talking about people that try to define who you are. And sometimes people may not always say it. Sometimes they may just look at you a certain way. So it's not always about what people say because some people can make you feel a certain way without saying a thing. And what happens is that eternal pain begins to develop. And when that internal pain begins to develop, you find yourself making adjustments to yourself based upon what somebody else has said. And you know why you do it? Because you're trying to prove that what they have said about you is inaccurate. Well, let me tell you something on this morning when they said it the first time, it was inaccurate. You don't have to change yourself. You are who God has called you to be. You are who God has created you to be. You are who God has made you to be. Don't you be ashamed of how you look. Don't you be ashamed of the man of God you are. Don't you be ashamed of the wonderful woman of God that you are. You are beautifully and you are wonderfully made. You are fearfully and you are wonderfully made. The enemy has used people to say things that were intentionally meant to crush you, to destroy your confidence in God, and to destroy your confidence in yourself. You know, sometimes people, like I said, they will say things and they wanted to just pierce just right through you. Your parents treated you that way because they didn't want you in the first place. I'm telling the truth on this morning. We gotta be careful of what you say to one another. And you gotta be careful of what you say to children. Cause I wanna tell you on this morning, they don't forget. The only reason why you in that person's life is because of what you can do for them. They don't want you, they don't need you, they only want what you can offer. And when they're done with you, they send you right on. Some people have told you you're nothing and you will never be anything. They don't love you, they just tolerate you. They don't love you, they just love what you can do for them. Did you know, as Pastor has taught us, hurt people hurt people, but heal people heal people you want to know why they treat you the way they do it's because they're still hurting they haven't been healed you want to know why you treat people the way you do it's because you're still hurting and you haven't been healed somebody say game of pain 
There are times where people may not say it, but their actions tell a whole lot. And actions, as they used to tell me, they speak louder than words. I can't hear what you're saying because I'm watching what you're doing. I can't hear what you're saying to me because I'm watching what you do to me. I can't hear what you're saying to me because I'm watching how you talk to me. I can't hear what you're saying to me because I, I, I can only see how you're treating me. I can't hear what you're saying because, again, I'm watching what you're doing. Your actions, they speak louder than words. The Bible says all men shall know that we are his disciples. Not by what we say to others. You know, sometimes we try to say little things in front of people so everybody can hear what we're saying. No, 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 no. That's not what he said. Not by what you say to others. And it's not even by how you look at people. Because, again, you will look at people a certain way, you know, when you have an audience. But it's not by how you look at people. We are not his disciples. Again, not by how people look at us or we look at them. Nor by the performance that we put on for the masses. He says, but the love we have one toward another. And some of you may say, well, what does love have to do with it? It has a whole lot to do with it. First Corinthians 13 and 4 says, love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. And it keeps no record of wrongdoing. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever their truth wins out. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith. It's always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Somebody say the game of pain. And let me encourage you on this morning. Don't just go through that pain. I told you, we grow through situations. So don't just go through that pain on this morning. I want to encourage you on this morning to grow through that pain. So tell somebody, game over. The last one that we're going to talk about on this morning is game of restraint. Somebody say restrain. How many of you on today, you are down on your knees and you are praying and seeking the face of God. But the enemy is telling you, you're done. It's over for you. You've been down there praying and seeking God for a long time. Why don't you get up from there? God is not listening to you. He's not hearing anything that you're saying. If we would just admit it to ourselves, we've been there. Where you are going through some heavy things. You're trying to go forward in God. You want more in God. Not even just that. You want better in life. You want to progress in life. But you're on your knees and you're praying. And you're seeking the face of God. But it feels like you cannot get in touch with God. Do I have a witness on this morning? You feel like God isn't hearing what you're saying. You may as well stop. You may as well give up. You might as well walk away. How much longer are you going to keep praying for and about that loved one? How much longer are you going to continue to pray about that situation and that circumstance? How long are you going to continue to pray about that healing that you've been believing God to do in your body? And instead of you getting better, you continue to grow worse. How long are you going to continue to pray about the work of God? You know what God laid on your heart to do. You know what he put on your heart to do to build his kingdom. You know what it's going to take for you to win those lost souls out there. But you feel like God is not hearing me. How long are you going to continue to pray about your next step in life? You know God doesn't want you where you are. You've been there too long. He's been pushing and nudging trying to get you to move forward. Some of you are in church, but your mind is so heavy that you can't even focus. The word of God is going forth, but you can't focus. Praise and worship is going on, but you can't get in touch with God. The word of God is going forth, but you feel like you can't even get your breakthrough. You're not focused. Your mind is heavy. That hurt continues to weigh heavily upon you. 
The enemy is telling you that the Lord, he's no longer with you. Well, let me tell you something on this morning. If he's telling you that the Lord is no longer with you, that's a good sign that the Lord is still with you. But you don't feel that way, and it doesn't seem like that. So he's telling you, the Lord is no longer with you. But you haven't sinned against God. And guess what? And if you did do something wrong, you obeyed the scripture, and you repented quickly. And when we do that, it's not just repeating, but you actually repent. That means your heart and your mind has changed. I'm not talking about you repenting before God, but you're constantly doing the same thing over and over and over again. That's not repentance. But you know you've done wrong and you got that thing right with God. Have you ever been there on this morning? Are you there right now? Some of you won't even own it. You will just get quiet. But some of you are there right now you feel like so many things are blocking you from where god is taking you maybe it's your own insecurity i'm not good enough i'm not smart enough i don't have what it takes i don't know enough i can't do it like she can i can't do it like he can it's your own insecurity that's hindering you from being the man of god or the woman of God that God has called you to be. He didn't call you to be like nobody else. He called you to do what he called you to do. He called you to be who he's called you to be. You don't have, I tell people all the time, I'm too old to try to be like somebody else. You better learn how to love yourself. You better learn how to love being who God has created you to be. I done got too old for that. I can't be you, you can't be me. Be who God has called you to be. Sometimes, again, it's your own insecurity. Maybe it's a financial strain. And let me tell you something. You know, some people can have money, but money can't buy you peace. So people can have all the money in the world, and you wonder why they commit suicide, because they don't have peace. So maybe you are in a financial strain, and God is able to bring you out. But you got to surrender everything to God. And when he does bring you out, don't find yourself in that same place again. Some of you, it could be friendships or relationships that you are allowing to prevent you from going forward in God. Sometimes it's internal battles that you're having within yourself that's preventing you from going forward in God. Stop trying to hold on to things that God never intended for you to have in the first place. You know, a lot of times I remember, even with Pastor, when we were back on, um, on 20, you know how sometimes the word of God will be going for, and a man of God, a woman of God, they're saying, get rid of that thing, get rid of that thing. And you at your seat saying, Lord, say it, say it. If you say what it is, Lord, I know you're talking to me. I don't have to say what it is. You know exactly what that thing is. That God is pressing upon your heart right now. You know exactly what that thing is that's weighing on your mind right now. God never intended for you to have it and you need to let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. You don't have the power, nor do you have the authority to change or convert anybody. What I've come to learn and what I've grown to learn is that a situation and a circumstance may not change. You can't change it, but guess who can change? You can. That situation and that circumstance, it may not change, but guess what? Allow God to change you while you're in it. And who are you to say, you know, I, you find yourself praying about different things and Praying about situations, Lord, work on them. Lord, deal with them. Lord, get them. Lord, get them. That's what you're praying. But who are you to say that God isn't dealing with that person? Who are you to say that God hasn't been speaking to them about what they're doing? Because what God has allowed me to see, you can pray that God will change this and change that. And God could very well be working on it. But guess what? That person, it could be that God is dealing with them, but they're stiff neck. God is dealing with them, but they refuse to change. So who are you? Don't you worry about 
when they're going to change and how they're going to change, when it's going to change or when that's going to change. You just continue to seek the face of God and put that thing in God's hands. And then you find yourself saying, Lord, search me. Search me from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. God, if you find anything in me that shouldn't be God, take it out. Deliver me and set me free because I want to be saved. I've got to be whole. I want to be the woman of God that God has called me to be. So don't worry about who won't change and what won't change. You let God change you. Somebody shout game over. Obey the voice of God. Obey the word of the Lord. Obey the voice of God. Obey the word of the Lord. What God may be telling me to do, that may not be what he's telling you to do. What God is telling you to do, it may not be what he's telling me to do. But one thing about it is, I'm going to obey whatever the word is for me. And you obey whatever the word is for you. This is what I had to learn, and this is what I'm still learning. I had to learn to obey God when I understood it and when I didn't. I had to understand that even though I didn't have a good understanding about it, I could see how God was beautifully blessing my life. Because there is a blessing in obedience. Again, I've lived to see how he's abundantly blessed my life. There were some friendships. There were some relationships. There were some circumstances that changed. But I didn't realize there was one person that needed to change, and that person was me. My mindset about things, my perception, and how I saw things had to change. The story that I was trying to create in my head to make sense of everything, it had to change. I was insecure. I told you they didn't even tell me that I was damaged goods. So I felt like, well, you know what? I'm just here. I'm just here. Whoever I can help, I help. Whatever I can do, I'll do because I felt like I wasn't good enough. Pastor mentioned, you know, when I came, I didn't say anything. I didn't. Before I came here, I sat in the back. I didn't say anything. I, I just tried to make sure I was minding my own business. I loved everybody. I really did. And you know, one person said they thought I was mute, y'all. That kind of offended me. But that's okay. I'm over it now. But I, I didn't say much. If people talk to me, I talk to them. But I stayed off to myself. And when he asked me to, I believe it was to do the announcements first. I didn't want to do the announcements. I came up with every reason why I couldn't do the announcements. I'm nervous. Well, you teach kids. Absolutely. I teach children. I don't teach adults. So I was nervous about getting up in front of adults. So I made an excuse of why I couldn't do that. Then he asked me to teach Sunday school. And some of you may feel the same way. And at the time, I was ashamed to say it, but I'm not anymore. I felt like I didn't know the word of God like I should. I felt like there were people that had a deeper understanding of the word of God than I did. What I've also learned is that people can have a deep understanding, but their life says a whole nother story. So I felt like I didn't know enough. So God began to deal with me. And when I tell you God got my attention, he got my attention. And I tell you, God broke me down and just let me know this thing ain't about you no way. This ain't about you. This is my work. This is what I want you to do. And when he did, I surrendered, saints. I surrendered. Did I get it right every time? No, I didn't. But I saw how God began to bless me. So I was in, in, insecure. Then I put limits on myself. Felt like I couldn't go as long as other people. I couldn't handle it the way other people could. I couldn't do it. I couldn't say it the way that they could. I felt inadequate. I felt like I didn't have everything that it took to be who God wanted me to be. I'm telling you this morning, the game, it was over. And the game is going to be over for a whole lot of you on this morning. 
So even though I didn't understand the who, and I didn't understand the what, I didn't understand the why, and I didn't understand the when. Let me tell you what I did understand. I understood that God would never leave me, nor would he forsake me, but he would be with me until the end of the world. I understood that if I would be willing and obedient, that I was going to eat the good of the lamb. I understood that I had to trust in the Lord with all of my heart and lean not unto my own understanding, but in all of my ways, I had to acknowledge him. And you know what he did for me? He directed my path. Let's go to Psalms, the 84th chapter and 11 verse. It says, for the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. So let me tell you what started to happen to me when I was going through the game of shame and I was going through the game of pain and I was going through the game of restraint. Something began to take place on the inside of me. You know what happened to me? The word of God became quick and powerful. It was sharper than any two-edged sword. It was piercing even to dividing asunder of my soul and my spirit and my joints and marrow. And it was a discerner of my thoughts and the intents of my heart. So no matter what the enemy is saying to you on this morning, it's in him that you live. It's in him that you move. It's in him that you have your being. Without God, you are nothing. You cannot do anything with the Lord without the Lord. But with Christ, you can do all things. Somebody say, game over. I prayed a prayer recently. It was just really on my heart. I began to just think about how long I've been saved. I began to just reflect on everything that I've experienced in my life, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I prayed this prayer and I said, Lord, help me not to ever lose a hunger nor a thirst for you. Help me to stay passionate about reading and studying your word. Help me to keep a desire to come to the house of God and not just be in the house of God, but to be present, to be focused, to be engaged, and to be actively, effectively active in the house of God. A lot of times we come here and we're just here. We're just here, we're functioning, but we're just here. Where our mind really isn't there. We're really not engaged in what God wants us to do in his house. So I ask God, don't let me lose the zeal and the passion that I have for the things of you, Lord. Don't let me lose the zeal and the passion that I have for the work of God, for the people of God, for the ministry, whatever it is that you placed in my life. I don't want to lose the passion and I don't want to lose the zeal. I don't want to ever make his kingdom or his work about me. This thing ain't about me. This thing is about God. He's to get all the glory. He's to get all the honor. It ain't about you. It ain't about me. Souls got to be saved. Sick bodies got to be healed. Troubled minds has got to be regulated. This thing ain't about you. It's about the Lord. So I ask God, don't allow me to make the kingdom about me. Don't allow me to make your work about me because you know what? You don't have to use me. You can use anybody else that you choose to use. So God, help me not to ever make this thing about me. I don't want to take anything that God has done for me for granted. I don't want to take the people of God that God has placed in my life for granted. I don't want to take the things of God that God has given me for granted. I don't want to take the blessings of God that God has given me for granted. Don't let me make this thing about me. For many of you, you have allowed yourself to be played long enough. This morning, you need to tell yourself and tell the enemy, game over. I'm not going out like this. I'm not listening to any more of your lies. I'm not listening to any more of your accusations. I'm not listening to any more of your degrading comments. I'm not listening to any more of your degrading behaviors. I'm not going out like this. I'm going to dive into the freedom, the joy, and the peace that God has prepared for me. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And wherever his spirit is, 
because that's where I want to be. I want to be free to praise God. I want to be free to worship God. I want to be free to be the woman of God that God has called me to be in every area and in every aspect of my life. I want to be free. How about you on this morning? Psalm 16 11 says, Thou wilt show me the paths of life. In thy pre presence is fullness of joy. How many of you have experienced or are experiencing the joy of the Lord? Because the joy of the Lord, it is my strength. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Why, Sister Boone, why are you telling me? Why are you telling me to move past all these games that the enemy keeps playing on? Well, let me tell you why. Because there's a song that only you can sing. There's a song that only you can sing that's going to bring somebody to deliverance. There is a lesson that only you will teach, Sister Lewis, that is going to bring clarity to a troubled mind. There's a testimony that only you can give, Sister Demona, that's going to encourage somebody to hold on to the promises of God. There is a message that only you can preach that will bring someone to salvation. So again, why must I hold on? Because God has a work for you to do. And only you are the one that's going to be able to do it. So we can allow the enemy to continue to trip us up with the same things over and over and over again. It has to stop somewhere. It has to stop at some time. My question to you is when? When? Are you going to completely and totally surrender to God so that God can do what he wants to do with your life? The decisions that I've had to make, the decisions that some of you may have to make on today, if you're serious about it, and those decisions that you have to make on today, it costs me some sleepless nights. It's going to cost you some sleepless nights. It cost me some time. It's going to cost you some time. It cost me some frustrations. It's going to cost you some frustrations. It cost me some headaches, and I mean literally, and it's going to cost you some headaches. It cost me some money, and it's going to cost you some money. But what God has in store for you will never, it will be incomparable of how God is going to bless your life, both naturally and spiritually. I said there is no comparison of what God is going to do in your life. Yeah, you may lose those sleepless nights. Yes, you may lose that time. And yes, you may lose that money. But when I tell you all things work together for the good of them that love God and who are the called according to his purpose. Don't you worry about how long it's going to take. Don't worry about when God is going to do it, how God is going to do it, who God is going to use to do it. Joel 2 and 25 says, and I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. I said my people. He says his people shall never be ashamed. That's why the enemy doesn't want you to tap into what God wants you to do. That's why he wants you to lose. That's why he doesn't want to turn you a loose. That's why he keeps playing those same games with you over and over and over again. Because he knows as soon as you tap into the joy of the Lord. As soon as you tap into that real peace of God, that game of shame, that game of pain, and that game of shame, it doesn't even matter anymore because now you have a better understanding. You realize and you understand that God is not trying to kill me, but he's making me. He's molding me. He's shaping me. He's making me into who he wants me to be. It was good for me that I was afflicted. And guess what? It's going to be good for you that you were afflicted. So look at your neighbor this morning and tell them, game over. Game over. Amen. Clap your hands for the Lord on this morning. <laughs> Amen. This is all that I have for you on this morning. And I'm going to ask that you will rest upon your feet. My prayer is that I have said something to encourage you 
to strengthen you, to give you a mind to continue to go and grow further in God. I don't know what it is that you're dealing with on this morning. You don't have to tell me. But one thing that I can do is I can pray. I can pray with you. I can pray for you. But again, you know what it is. And you know, it's something how when God is dealing with us about things, we are willing to let go of everything else but that one thing. We try to pretend like we don't hear God speaking. We try to pretend like God isn't really just pressing it upon you and laying it upon your heart. We try to act like we don't know what God is talking about. But you know exactly what that thing is. And like I told you before, I don't have to, I don't have to say it. Let me just go ahead and say this. The Lord ain't told me. It's not for me to know. But you know. You know. And if you really want to move forward in God, whatever it is, let it go. And I'm not just telling you something that I've heard. But I'm telling you something that I have experienced. Did I want to let it go? Nope. Did I want to move on? Nope. Did I want to give up? Nope. But it was there. It was there constantly. Weighing and pressing and weighing and pressing. I wasn't waiting for somebody to call my name out and prophesy and thus said the Lord, nope. Because I knew what God was dealing with me about. Yeah, it hurt. Yes, it's tough. But God will bring you through it. And you just have to trust him. He knows what he's doing. He knows where he's taking you. He knows why, but you got to trust him. Stop allowing the enemy to play games with you. And here's the thing, these aren't new, this is the same stuff over and over and over. You know you shouldn't be where you are right now. 12 months goes by so fast. Five years, 10 years, that time it gets away from us. But then you look up and you see yourself in that same place over and over again. Game over. So I'm going to ask you on this morning to get your mind and your heart on the Lord. And whatever it is that God has laid on your heart, whatever it is that he's dealing with you about, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to challenge you to surrender that thing to him on this morning. Surrender it completely and totally. And I promise you, when you do, see how God blesses your life. Father God, in the name of Jesus. God, I'm asking you, Lord, that you will look down upon your people on this morning. God, you see and you know exactly what they're dealing with, what they're battling with. And God, for some of them, it's hard to let go. It's hard to move on. But God, they can do all things through Christ that strengthens them. God, I'm asking that you would give them the strength to say no to it and say yes to you. To surrender it all, God. Give them the strength. Lead them, guide them, direct them. God, look down upon those that are not saved on this morning. God, I'm asking you, Lord, that you would give them a mind to completely and totally surrender to you. Whoever you are on this morning, if you're not saved, you'll just repeat these words, but just mean them from your heart. And ask the Lord, Lord, tell him I'm sorry for everything that I've said, for everything that I've done that was not like you. God, I'm asking that you would save me, deliver me, and set me free. Let him know that you want to live the life that's pleasing to him, but you need power. Ask God to fill you with his Holy Ghost. Give you a mind to completely and totally surrender to him and to live for him for the rest of your days. In Jesus' name. God, and we thank you. 
and we appreciate you for it right now. Let's give God a hand clap on this morning. Amen. I'm going to turn you to the hands of our pastor, Pastor Jonathan Hall. Come on and put those hands together and bless them, bless them, bless them. Lift those hands. Oh, the Lord spoke on this morning. Some of you right now, Satan has been playing games with your mind. Some of us have lost some things. And I heard her talk about relationships. Some of you under the sound of my voice. The relationship that you have with yourself is one of the biggest things that need to change that mindset. That narrative that you've created. That perspective. Paul said, I'm forgetting those things which are behind. And I press toward the mark of the high calling of Christ Jesus. Wednesday night, I preached a message entitled, I've learned my lesson. And some of you, you don't need to take the baggage of 2021 into 2022. Like the woman of God said, this morning, you need to make a decision that I'm going to give God a yes. If you're here this morning, and you say, Pastor Halton, whatever that is that God is tugging on me, I'm ready to surrender it. If that's you, this is what I want you to do. I want to pray for you. I want to give you ministry. I want to give you the strength. I want to pray that you got to give you the strength to do whatever it is that he's calling you to do. So if you're here this morning and you need prayer for anything, I want you to come. 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 You to come. That's it. That's it. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Come, 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 come. You say, I want to leave it at the altar right now. I want to leave it at the altar right now. That's it, that's it, that's it. Some of you say, Pastor Halton, I've been struggling with sickness all year. I don't want to carry this into 2022. I've been struggling going through in my mind and in my emotion and in my spirit. I don't want to bring this into 2022. If that's you, Come on, come on, come, 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 speak come, Lord, come, come. Lift those hands, lift those hands, lift those hands, lift those hands. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Speak, Lord, speak, Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to pray right now. The woman of God preached the word and God's going to seal it right now. In the name of Jesus, do it now. In Jesus' name, lay your hand on him, God. Oh, God, we give you a yes right now. In Jesus' name. Do it, God. Do it, God. That's it. That's it. Do it right now, God. In the name of Jesus. Lay your hand on them, God. Lord, I agree right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Do it, God. In Jesus' name. Uh, hallelujah, God. Do it right now in Jesus' name. Oh, God, touch it right now. In Jesus, that's it. Oh, from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet, do it now, God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, give him a yes. 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 Yes to your will. Yes to your way. God, I surrender everything. Have your way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Do it right now. Do it right now. In the name of Jesus. Are there those of you that are here? Just lift your hands and say, Lord, I surrender. I surrender. Lord, I surrender. I'll do it, God. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll be what you want me to be. I'll do what you want me to do. I've learned my lesson. I'm not going to repeat the same mistakes. I'm not going to play the game of shame. I'm not going to play the game of pain. I'm not going to play the game of restraint. But you ought to tell somebody, game over, game over, game over. Game over, I'm moving on. I'm moving on. Game over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil can't have my mind. He can't have my heart. 
He can't have my emotions. Game over. been what I did but that's not who I am somebody shout game over somebody shout game over somebody shout game over <laughs> tell somebody the devil thought he had me but shout game over The devil thought it was over, but somebody shout game over. Oh, yeah. You know how I know the game is over. Because God didn't just say I was a conqueror. But he said I'm more than a conqueror. And he said, behold, I give you One more time, shout game over, game over, game over, game over, game over, game over. Satan, you can't have my mind. Satan, you can't have my heart. Satan, you can't have my joy. Because this joy that I have, the devil didn't give it to me. And if the devil didn't give it to me, he can't take it away. One more time, stomp your foot and shout game over. It's over, it's over, it's over. It's over, it's over. It's over, it's over. Tell your neighbor it's over. Tell your neighbor, I got a testimony. Give an honor to God. Who's ahead of my life? To the past and first lady. I came to tell you. The devil thought he had me. But I found out this morning is game over. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. A feeling. Put a praise on it. Everything is gonna be all right. The devil thought he had your shout. He thought he had your praise. I tell you to just jump up and shout, game over, game over. I still got to praise. I still got to praise. I still giving him glory. I'm still waving my hands. God, move God. Heal the sick. Regulate the mind. Man, the broken hearted. Game over, game over. He gave you one more. He gave you one more. He almost slay you. He gave you one more. He gave you one more. Woo! He gave you one more. Hallelujah. You don't want to be grateful. You should 
could have kept your mind <laughs> when you was in the truck house. <laughs> but God, I oh, somebody ought to give him glory. Somebody ought to pray. I said it gave you one more. I said it gave you one more. Gave you one more. I said it gave you one more. He 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 gave you one more. Let him bless you. Let him bless you. I said, let him touch you. Let him touch you. You got it. Let me see your way. If you have If you got it. Let me see your way. If you have Say, I got it. 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 This is my victory shout. This is my victory praise. I just told the devil game over. Do me a favor, do me a favor, do me a favor, do me a favor, do me a favor. Just tell somebody, tell them, neighbor, I don't talk to the devil. Tell them I don't have conversations with the devil. But tell them, just in case you talk to him, send him this message. Tell the devil, game over. <laughs> tell him, game over. Tell him, game over. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Thank God. Oh, yes, he did. Oh, yes, he did. <laughs> How many enjoyed yourself? Woo. Oh, yes, he did. Hallelujah. Lift those hands. Lift those hands. Lift those hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just lift those hands. Worship him for a moment. Found out this morning the game is over. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Lift those hands. We're about to get out of here on your way out. Give God what's right, not what's left. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We give you the praise and the glory. We thank you, Lord, that we found out this morning that I don't have to go looking for the victory, but I already have the victory. Father God, we thank you right now.
that even though the devil is trying to play mind games he's trying to play games with the emotions he's trying to play games in the spirit lord we thank you right now that we still have the victory and you gave us power over all the power of the enemy and you said nothing by any means will hurt us God in the name of Jesus we don't know God what we have in front of us but we know wherever we go you're gonna go with us we know whatever we have God you're gonna give it to us God and Lord right now we know God that wherever we have to face on this week God that you have us covered Lord you are with us and you will never forsake us and we give Give you the glory and the praise and the honor lord as we leave this place but never from your presence give us back to bring us back at the appointed time and on time these and other blessings we ask in your son jesus name somebody say in jesus name somebody say in jesus name now i dare somebody just shout three times game over game over game over now lift those hands and put a praise on it Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus.